My one three five is just about um, ideation in in acute stroke, uh, and kind of um, decided to to look at this uh, based on a, a, a recent case that I saw, which I'll mention in in a couple of minutes. Um, so ideation in acute stroke. Um, a, a fairly reliable sign of, of being able to localise which hemisphere is affected uh, in acute stroke, first described uh, by Prevost in, in, in the, the 19th century, um, and the, the concept being that the eyes deviate towards the affected hemisphere and away from the side of the hemiparesis in, in, in acute stroke. Um, uh, and varying sort of um, <coughs> figures about how, how common this is. So in one study they, they mentioned and between 16 to 28 percent of acute stroke, they didn't really qualify what severity of stroke this is. So I'm imagining this is 16 to 28 percent of moderately to severe stroke. Um, and, and this can be assessed either either clinically at the, the bedside or, or on CT. Uh, and actually, a lot of the literature is about CT um, because, because this is a, a useful tool for, for radiologists when they're, they're interpreting the scan, particularly if they don't have uh, a lot of history to go by. Uh, and in this one study, had a, had a positive predicted value of, of 93% for identifying uh, the, the, the correct hemisphere. Um, also useful as, as a prognostic sign, so it is correlated with, with stroke severity. So, so patients with eye deviation will have a higher NIHSS um, and larger infarcts in one study. Um, and, and generally thought to, although seen in both left and right sided um, uh, stroke is is um, more common with with right side lesions and and particularly when it's when it's prolonged beyond sort of 24 to 40 hours um, that, then one study is suggesting that this is exclusively because of spatial neglect of the right hemisphere lesions um, uh, rather, rather, rather than anything else um, what the the mechanism behind this might be um, so um, the 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 kind of innervation of of, of a horizontal gaze, uh, begins in the, the, the frontal eye field, and in this case in the di diagram on the left, um, then go, uh, descending down into the, the pons in the PPRF um, and uh, into the, the sixth nerve nucleus, uh, which communicates with the third nerve nucleus on the other side through the MLF, uh, and then that would produce uh, gaze um, to, to the right. So, so the, the, the left hemisphere pushes eyes to the right and the right hemisphere pushes eyes to the left. Um, and depending on what sort of lesion you might have then, um, as one um, video explained it, then, then underactivity due to destructive lesions such as a stroke would cause movement towards the affected side and overactivity due to an irritative lesion um, such as a seizure would cause, cause movement away. Um, one study performed a sort of DI, a DWI pattern analysis to see are there uh, specific areas, how, how well can we localise where in the brain um, lesions may be, and actually there wasn't kind of one particular area and uh, there was multiple of these kind of networks involving basal ganglia, temporal parietal cortex um, uh, and, and uh, one finding they did have is that a smaller lesion in the right hemisphere um, could produce IV deviation but if you're seeing IV deviation because of a left hemisphere stroke then, then expect that to be a more severe stroke and, and, and a more extensive infarct. And finally um, not always not always entirely reliable. So, so this was um, what, what the, the case that I was mentioning was, was a case where we were seeing a patient in recess with with um, uh, expected uh, acute stroke. So had um, presented having um, been in a uh, been a, an accident and found at the wheel with with what was thought to be a right hemiparesis and dysphagia. Brought brought to to any &E, uh, we did all of his Im imaging acutely. I uh, didn't really see any evidence of any um, occlusion or, or or anything else in the CT perfusion that would, that would suggest he was having a, a left hemisphere stroke. And then actually, when we got him back round to recess and looked at him again, uh, his head and eyes were deviated the wrong way, so so they were they were uh, also going to the right um, towards the side of hemiparesis. Um, and then we, when we sort of stepped back and looked at him, we thought, well, actually, is he? Is he dysphagic or is he just a bit drowsy and, and is he weak or is it is it that his right arm and leg are twitching a little bit uh, and then kind of wondered whether whether he was actually seizing and, and, and covered a bit of both um, in terms of in terms of therapy. So potentially a stroke mimic could be a, a cause of the eyes not going in the, in the direction that you suspect um, or possibly because of thalamic involvement. So multiple case reports, mostly of thalamic hemorrhage um, and some of thalamic ischemia um, showing that the lesions in the thalamus um, can produce uh, eye deviation with acute stroke, but not in not in the direction that, that you would expect in several sort of um, mechanisms for, for, for why that, that might be the case, but but no kind of definite um, definite knowledge about that. 
Uh, those are my references at the, at, at the bottom. Um, one that I'll highlight particularly for, for the other trainees and others that might be interested is this YouTube channel called Nodal. So this is um, neuro-ophthalmology, um, like, so, sort of short clips um, by, by a, a neuro-ophthalmologist uh, from America called Andrew Lee. Uh, and he explains in really kind of short, snappy segments with some quite complicated sometimes, or for me, complicated anyway, um, concepts in, in neuro-ophthalmology, which I found quite helpful. Uh, that's all. Thank you.